all this Star Wars stuff, I'm, I just get more and more excited for the new one. I cannot wait. But let's let's move on to Return of the Jedi. You mean Revenge of the Jedi? Or Return Return of the Jedi. You mean Revenge? Why would you call it Revenge? It was originally called Revenge of the Jedi. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And they changed the name because it's like, well, Jedi's it's kind of revenge and Jedi doesn't really go together. Well, yeah, because they're the, whole... the original title of the movie. There's posters that say Revenge of the Jedi. Oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that. Well, they're they're so, totally like pacifism, right? They're not. They're all exactly. About... That's why they're like eh. revenge. Nah, not so much not of their it. style. <laughs> and actually, if you look at what happens in Return of the Jedi, he's just like, hey, like, just stop being bad. Like that's his whole like until he's like, okay, I guess I got to fight you now. <laughs> but okay. Return of the Jedi, your favorite, Jordan. I well, like this. We have all three, right? My favorite is New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. Yeah, that one I still have not seen in a really long time. But I just <clears> love <throat> the Ewoks and that whole scene, the battle scene. Not specifically that they were Ewoks. They right, could have okay, been okay. any indigenous people. But the way they battled all these robots and stuff with logs and traps. And it was very cool. I mean, yeah. you have to give it that aspect was really awesome you know like home alone ish you know just like guess, they're walking yeah. into these traps and then just like all these little ewoks like hanging on to these big giant row were the at-at's there or were those the ATSTs? ATSTs. ats's oh, yes. yeah okay sorry uh, <laughs> nerd alert well, what's, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> no the uh what's interesting about that is that that whole storytelling idea it's it, uh, the story goes that originally those were supposed to be um um chewbacca wookies Right. But having Chewbacca be this excellent pilot and have all of, you know, hanging out with Han, it kind of didn't have, he didn't have that indigenous feel to him anymore, right? So I think that's why they went with the Ewoks. But it is that idea of nature versus technology, right? And that, yeah, definitely. So that, that is awesome. That is fantastic. And, and the speed bikes through the forest. You know, I they, mean, how cool was that? That was super that was cool. Really cool. So cool. They filmed that in uh, the Redwoods in California. That's oh, where they really? filmed all that, which is awesome. I mean, the, the, just the, awesome. the cinematography of all that is just awesome. If you if you ever get a chance, go check out. You can First of all, you can. there's trees big enough that they've cut holes in that you can drive your car through. Yeah, it's cool. I think, I think it's just one. No, there's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless. If you, you drove can... through it, and then you drove back <laughs> through it. I was a kid. <laughs> I was a little kid, so maybe you were right. I got tricked. My dad's like, there's two of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. No, but definitely check it out. Redwoods of California. Um, so one thing that's interesting about Return of the Jedi, and I, I think we, we talked about this with Empire, at this point, the movie feels like a spectacle, right? It feels like a big blockbuster. Grandiose, huge. Yeah, yeah. and I think some of that <clears throat> hurts the movie, honestly. That's part of why I don't like Return of the Jedi. And not that I don't enjoy it. I love it, but it's not my favorite because of that reason, because it feels more of a... It's gotten so at this point. I mean, the the first one came out in seventy nine, and the last one was in eighty three. No, 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 eighty. I don't remember the year. Oh, I should know this. I think it's seventy seven. That sounds like a details yeah, guy kind of I question. Should know that. Especially Anyways, a Star Wars detail. Guy. I think it's eighty. Right. I'm pretty sure it's eighty three is when Return of the Jedi. But at this point, the the budget is through the roof. Uh, there's going to be a million toys made. So it just it feels like it's serving multiple masters at that point, right? Yep. You have to create toys. You have to create a reason, you know, just like they do now. Um, and I feel like some of the storytelling gets lost. Now, this is what's interesting about you talked about with with Han's character. Beginning of it, he's in a, he's just for himself, right? And then, of course, he at the by Return of the Jedi, he's a full fledged like commander in the right. in general. The, General in the imp- in the uh, the rebellion. Re- rebellion or the Rebel Alliance. Oh, David. I know. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> messing up all the words here. No, but it's interesting because, and this is another question. So when he gets frozen in carbonite, right? Is he does he like is he thinking or is he like in a coma? I'm I sh- think it's like stasis. Where yeah. You, you know, so just... like, here's the thing. Well, maybe maybe I guess being frozen in carbonite might change your opinion on on who you should be fighting for and who you should be fighting against, right? Because I'd be pretty pissed if I got frozen in carbonite. But everybody else in the ha- in the story has time to essentially grow, right? And 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 kind of become characters it, or have motivations and things like that. But like Han comes out of it and he's like, okay, can I, I'm I'm with the I'm with the Rebel Alliance at that point. I think he was, he was a already in an Empire. Yeah, as soon as Empire started, he Protecting was um, the princess they, and all that kind of right, stuff. Right, and he was like gonna leave and go take care of his debt to Jabba. And then they were like, uh, they, there was some. Oh, we went to go find Luke instead of taking care of that. And but right. when he went to leave, they were like, you're our best commander. We hate to lose you. You know what I mean? So he was already. <laughs> pretty involved at that yeah. point i don't think he was just changing his mind after he's frozen because he didn't get frozen until farther in the right and and the the podcast that i listened to talked about it would have been interesting to have han in return of the jedi when he's with leia and they're trying to take over the base on indoor or um uh, indoor right yep. yeah or the, the forest mood of indoor yes so it would be interesting if he turned to leia and he's like when all like when it seems like all hope is lost and they're gonna lose he's like hey let's just get out of here 
Like let's let's me and you, you know, go, go have a life of our own and forget all this. That, that would have been interesting. Right? Yeah, but I don't you know, think it would have gone anywhere. Gone for that. Yeah, she would just Maybe. say absolutely not. I mean, no, she's a princess of I, the rebellion. She'd I been know. like, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here with she my people. Probably would have slapped him or something. <laughs> I, yeah, I was totally against her character to be like that, and she wouldn't even really let Han know that she had feelings for him. Like she would fight against that. Like, even in the Empire, like as soon as. He's like, you know, you like me. She like goes and kisses Luke, which is totally a woman thing to do. Like, <laughs> oh, at the very beginning, yeah. Like, by Cloud City, she's like, I love you. Yeah, I'm just saying. But, but you know, point. he saved her life how many times now? So I mean, yeah. he deserves it, I guess. And okay. you find kill feel bad for Luke until you find out it's his sister. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, oh, good oh thing, man, good thing yeah. that worked out the way it did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would have been real awkward. So one of the things in Empire, uh, Empire, uh, or excuse me, Return of the Jedi is the special scene that's added when they go to Jabba's palace with the dancing... It's oh, called God, Jedi I feel... Rocks, I think is the name of the song. It's yeah. so bad. I, I get why. I, I don't understand. Why? It's so... Because I, it's Lucas and he doesn't even know. But it's so out of place. And yeah, they didn't well, need it. there's a lot of stuff in the special edition <laughs> that's out of place. That wouldn't be the first thing. But I love the battle with the Rancor. I love the Rancor. The fight between yeah, him yeah, and, yeah. and... Oh, yeah. That was awesome. But that it, what's interesting, they go back and watch that. Okay, so what was their plan? Because if their plan was to get captured, you know what I mean? Like, because the whole he sh- R2 shoots the lightsaber across the thing, he grabs it, he frees himself, Luke does, and they're at, when they're at the Sarlacc pit. Because it seems like the plan was Leia was going to, in the middle of the night, unfreeze Han and then escape. Yeah. Right? Well, that was a, if that was the plan, then it didn't... Like, it's just weird. Like, how did no, they I plan? I think he had it... Okay, so I this is what I think. Luke, or um, R2 always had the lightsaber because it's like, listen, we're going to send Leia in, yeah. get him out, and we're cool. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to go in there, start up some, you know, stuff, and then we'll get him out then. Yeah. You have my lightsaber just in case, because they're going to take it away from me. That's so a good I'll just point. give it to you in advance, just in case. Nobody I shakes down the droids, apparently. Yeah. If you're well, a droid. Send them through the metal detector. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> like, you're full of metal. What? <laughs> yeah, so if the first plan worked, then they would have all just left. Yeah. But because it didn't, they needed to send in the Jedi. Gotcha. To take care of business. Yeah, I that scene, the Sarlacc pit scene, is the best. I love that. Like Han's still getting, he can't see. He's got the hibernation sickness. He's like, "What's going on, buddy?" And he's <laughs> like, "You're about to die." He just duck. Boba Fett. Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. Boba Fett. Everyone loves Boba Fett. I love Boba, Boba Fett. Boba Fett is huge Fett. for not being huge. Yeah. In yeah. the movies. <laughs> like, so I was at um, the Disney store the other day, and they have like talking figures push button. They have yeah. a Boba Fett that has like seven talking phrases. I'm like, I think he only says seven things in all three movies. <laughs> <laughs> it says like, put him in the cargo hold. It's like, that's an iconic phrase. Yeah. I guess. I guess. Yeah. Now, what's interesting, did they go back and, because the actor who plays Jango Fett obviously is the clone of, right. it's his son, right? His un- yeah. Boba Fett is a clone of Jango Fett, but at a normal, he grows at a normal age. Yeah. Being, yeah. Now, the special editions, they went back and added the guy's voice who was Jango Fett's yep. voice. Because I, see, this is the cool thing. That, yeah. See, huh. and then, okay. And then, of course, the big thing that they changed, and there was a, I read something about how to explain this, retcon this, is at the end of Jedi, Return of the Jedi. Oh, we're going right to the end, right? Well, what do you want to talk about? No, I'm, there's a lot of stuff, but it's fine. No, no, no. So the return of the at the end of Return of the Jedi, when they're when he sees the ghost of Obi Wan, he sees him as an as older Ben, and then he sees uh, Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen, and everyone's like, "Well, that doesn't make sense. Why would he? See? He doesn't even know what he looks like." But there's this there's this theory that when that was when Anakin died, right? Anakin died as that, and then he became Darth Vader. It's this idea that because when he kills when he when he doesn't kill, but when he Darth Vader dies on the Death Star, right, and he takes off his mask, it looks like an egg. <laughs> yeah he does kind of look like Eggman from the old Batman <laughs> <laughs> no but the point is is that his body doesn't like disappear like it does for Obi-Wan or like Yoda he doesn't give himself he away to the source he just dies so the idea is that Hayden Christensen was was the last that's when he was given to the force or whatever you want to say the last moment when anakin lived that's interesting i thought that was kind of no, a cool i think they just put it in there to make sense but whatever yeah <laughs> con- they were just trying to add some continuity go see the original yeah. movie or go see the prequels is what they're trying to say uh, right exactly but um i i didn't think that there were projections in his mind are they i thought it was a projection from the force it doesn't matter if he knows what they look like i know it's just who would be like who's that guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i know you two who's that guy <laughs> right right, right. <laughs> oh. that would be confusing it I would be weird Luke. to see right and like he's never actually seen what his dad looks like, other than the egghead. Yeah. So he's like, "Who? Man, my dad was a lot better looking back in the day." <laughs> right. It's like, why didn't? Why did Obi age? <laughs> yeah. I also like um, the the scene where um, one of my favorite scenes of Return of the Jedi is obviously. It, it, here's another thing about Return of the Jedi: it is definitely a space opera. If you go back and watch it, some of the acting is 
not that great. Like when Luke is just like In the whole trilogy of acting. He's just like, here. my friends are gonna help. Like <laughs> you're you're wrong. It's just like, dude, like. Chill, just chill a little out, daytime Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, in the first one when they're getting in there like, your R2 unit's a little screwed up. You want a new one? He's like, no, we've been through so much together. And I'm like, <laughs> you just met that guy like <laughs> just like a couple days ago. <laughs> He's like so committed to R2-D2. Yeah, so there's definitely some opera or um, uh, soap opera feel to it. You know, yeah, it's yeah, definitely space it. opera. Um, what is awesome about the, there's a scene where, and of course, I'll get the details wrong. This is where hopefully you can fill in. It's the part when Luke is talking to the Emperor with Darth Vader there. I love that whole scene because it's the, there's a, it's a rubber band thing, right? The tension, tension, tension. Like, when are they going to fight? When are they going to fight? When are they going to fight? And he says, the Emperor, Luke says to the Emperor, your your confidence is your biggest uh, weakness, right? You're overconfident of, of your, 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 your empire, essentially, is what he says. And then the Emperor says, well, your biggest weakness is your trust in your friends. Yeah, yeah. Right. And the thing that's unique there is they're kind of talking about the same thing. Right. And about Darth Vader, because he's saying your confidence in what you've built your empire in your loyal, you know, right hand man, Darth Vader is your biggest weakness. And he's saying, well, your friends is your big, your trust in your friends. They're talking about the same thing. Right. Yeah. Darth Vader, because he's like, he's my, he will end up being good. And What's interesting, obviously, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, Padme's like, there's still good in him. I, I swear there is. Like, right. that's what's so, like... And it's a prophecy that it's, he's going to bring balance to the Force. And right. He and that's... Eventually does. That's what's so cool. Like, I'm getting goosebumps <clears throat> just talking about it, because that's so awesome. Like, that is so cool. And that, that goes into... Do you, what else do you want to add? Because I want to talk about the ring theory a little bit. But oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, the ring theory is this idea. It's a... In its most simplest form, it's the... it's. Um, like here, here's an example. It's a circle and it never ends. No, the, the sim- no, it's a, like an order or something. No, it's it's two <laughs> su- two successful clauses or sentences in reverse order. The prime example is Kennedy saying, "Ask not what your country can do for you; ask what you can do for your country." So it's this A B B A, right? That's the idea. And so what? No, I didn't do this, but obviously there's a theory you can read it online. Actually, I'll put it in the show notes because it's like nine pages. You said long. it last week. I'll let check the show notes. Wasn't there what you said that Amazon no, link? Yeah, they were. They were in the show notes. Uh, I, I didn't you gotta see hit it. the thing that expands them down. Oh, yeah. Okay. You don't Just know how checking. to use the phone. <laughs> you don't know how to use YouTube. <laughs> so there's this idea that the there is a ring theory of how the movies are matched up, and meaning it goes A B C, meaning Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, and then it goes C B A, meaning A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and the two A's match up, the two B's match up, and the two C's. So it goes. The first movie matches up with the last movie. It's a it's a reflection well, of that movie. Yeah, it's a reflection. It's a ring. So it, it it continually cycles it. So like here's an example. Let me give you some examples. So for instance, the Phantom Menace and the um, Return and Return of the Jedi. So for instance, Act One: Two Jedi's embark on a mission to rescue Queen Amidala from the 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 palace. Right? Yeah, Trade Federation. Yeah. Right. If you go back and you look at Return of the Jedi, two droids embark on a mission to rescue Han Solo from Jabba the Hutt. Now, it's close. There's more examples in here, but I'm just trying to show you that there are, there's mirror. And so what people are saying is what Lucas was trying to do, and they even like take shots. Like, like the beginning of, uh, um, Return of the Jedi, there's a scene where the, um, J- uh, Darth Vader is coming to the returned, the b- rebuilt, um, Death Star. Death Star. And it's the scene where he's flying and he lands. And then in, in, um, in the Phantom Menace, it's the same thing. A ship is coming, they land, they get out. The the Jedi's there's they do shot for shot. It's it's pretty yeah, incredible. You can, that can either be this ring theory you're talking about. I've never looked into it, or just lazy writing. <laughs> <during> yeah, <laughs> he's just like, like just they copy love that the, scene. Let's just do it let's again. Follow the form. Yeah, right. exactly. It's a template <clears throat> made, copy paste. No, and then like for instance, like uh, Revenge of the Sith. Sith. If you look at that one, a space battle between the Republic and Separatist force rage over Coruscant. Coruscant. Yeah. yeah, and then if you look at New Hope and you you flip it, the reverse of it, Act Three is a space battle between Imperial and Rebel forces raging over the Death Star. So it's this idea that it's it, the entire movie is a mirror of itself. It's interesting. I, I like I said, it might not. The whole it, thing's a bunch of space battles. <laughs> yeah, and like, going out and rescuing people yeah. and uh, well, I mean space battles though. It's the same yeah, thing. There's like, droids, well, there's, there's pairs of people. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't buy this ring. Yeah, neither do I. The well, ring seems that like never lazy ends. writing and directing for the prequels. I always think it's funny what they say, like you know, in the weddings, they're like the ring. It's a circle. Cause circles never end. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, no shape ends. <laughs> <laughs> like none. Like squares. They just have ninety degree angles. Try. 
triangles. That's like funny. it should <laughs> has nothing to do with the circle shape. No shapes in. That's what makes them shapes and not just weird <laughs> lines. That's funny. I can see you interrupting. Does anyone have anything objective? Real quick. I, uh, <laughs> ring, ring, a uh, uh, triangle would be the same Fish, thing. You're wrong. <laughs> yeah. I don't really see the significance of the never ending thing because like that applies to every single shape in existence. All right. So now that we've kind of got, do you have anything else you want to add? Return of the Jedi? I don't want Return of the Jedi, but I did have a interesting conversation about the uh, Phantom Menace with my friend at work. What'd you say? He said that... It's a long episode. Now. I know, but we're not going back. <laughs> we'll just uh, have this in. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to cut this. We're going to do a special edition of three weeks ago <laughs> and cut this one in. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> no, but uh, he said that Jar Jar Binks was originally supposed to be a bad guy. And hmm. that he was going in, like, supposed to be in, like, the second or third movie. He's going to have more significant parts. And he was actually going to turn on everybody and, like, turn him in to the dark side. Well, he is kind of the, like he is the catalyst for why the Empire, he's the one that votes, gives the Chancellor Right. Powers. And it makes, like, the things make more sense. Because, you know, he like, goes to the Gungan base and everyone's like, hates him. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm just clumsy. And it's like, that's, like, totally <laughs> an excuse you would give. If, that's like, funny. Everyone hates you because you're a traitor, you know? He just, he just turns to the camera and he's like, Jar Jar kills. <laughs> he just turns. Super evil. And then, like in the battle, where he's like accidentally <laughs> yeah. doing things and not getting hurt because he's, he's, he's really on there that side, so they're not trying to hurt him. Hand and up, uh, yeah. yeah, I was like, that could have made him more likable. Way too much into this. It's kind of like the ring no, theory. It's like you're looking too much into it, man. No, it's, it's cool though. I, it's I a cool little yeah. They're fan theories. It's cool to think of, but it's like. So what do you what do you? Uh, here's another thing about with the new movie because we did this with the prequels. What do we what do we hope that the the episode seven learns from the original trilogy? And the first thing that I think is they're just going to make the original trilogy again. Now, mm, well, it feels like it, right? I mean, They have a Death Star, right? It feels like they have kind of a so Death Star. Luke is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and there'll be a new version of Luke. And Yeah, like that's that what kind it kind of... Say. I, they might split it a little bit on how it... How Knowing it, J.J., he's going to twist this thing up. <laughs> There's going to be a giant... flares and twists everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, may, maybe, maybe like a... maybe. I'm not, I wouldn't say a carbon copy of the movie no. or the trilogy, but it's definitely going to be... Um, it's gonna be one of the Sky the Skywalker's kids, Finn or Ray, or one of them are kids. Yeah, it must be. It's it looks so good. There's a couple of TV spots that they're showing now, and I'm just like, oh, when I that guess. Stormtrooper brings up that thing that can like stop a lightsaber. Yeah, like, super oh, cool. So cool. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. So okay, moving on. Let's talk about some of the the game. Well, you didn't even let me answer, but keep focus. That's what I hope they learn. There was a focus on those movies, and it was very streamlined, one to the next thing, and. There, you can almost cut it up in like five parts for the, at least New Hope. I recently watched that one, um, and I don't think you can do so that. Can be said for the old, the other trilogy. Feels all so, over the place. Yeah, so it's just like it's direct. Like it goes by really fast. You don't, you know, you don't even think about it. But it's just like he's on Tatooine. Then they're they jump to Mos Eisley. They're after the princess of the Death Star. Then they go to. Uh, I forget the next step, but then they do the final battle. Yeah. yeah, it feels delineated. Oh, he's in the rebel base, and then they're in the... Right. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, it's it's just kind of like paced along really nice, and it's just quick, good story, not just like, let's throw a bunch of other things, and then they're on this planet made of water, and then they're in this, you know, it just right. kind of, I don't know, I hope that's what they do. Yeah. Also, maybe maybe one of our listeners or viewers can explain to me, but um, is, is there canon material that explains in between um, Empire and Jedi how Luke becomes a Jedi? It was Yoda. Yoda taught him everything. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. No, and that's... Like, that- he comes in with Black Coke, <laughs> his green lightsaber that, again, there's nothing explaining how he builds it. I know there's that book, Heir to the Jedi, which I haven't read because I heard it's terrible, but um, but I need, I want to know, how does he how does he build his lightsaber? How does he become... Yeah, because even Darth Vader says, oh, you from? look like you crafted a new <clears throat> weapon or whatever, right? Yeah, exactly. If there's any canon material that maybe I've He missed, is or... super cool. When he walks into Jabba's palace and he's just like, you're going to give me Han Solo or you're going to die. Like, and he gets just, on the page, he's like, crap, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's my point. I think, like, their plan was like, oh, he's going to be like, give, he'll give up on no deal. I'm a Jedi. Look yeah, at me. I'm an all black, him, yeah. man. I look awesome. Got and he's the freaking clown. Also, <laughs> awesome. when there's no other Jedis to say, no, you're not. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. But like, do you have a lightsaber? I don't think so. I'm a Jedi. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I did forget to, to say one thing about the original trilogy versus the prequel trilogy. But so the Jedi robes, pretty iconic, right? Yes. The, t- the tan and the brown things. I thought about picking one up and wearing it on the episode. They're way too expensive. Go ahead. So there's this, this thing on the internets and the, on the webs. That those aren't Jedi robes originally, because uh, Owen, his uncle, is wearing one on Tatooine. Right. There, it's a origi- it's a traditional Tatooine garb. Oh, okay. And because, but because Obi Wan was wearing something like that, that it's Jedi garb, but it's like not. Nah, it's just what they wore on Tatooine. Mm. But now in the prequels, they took that as Jedi right. robes and stuff when they're really not. 
It's well, just Uncle Owen was a Jedi. Done. Yeah, maybe <laughs> he's not. Though. Maybe they wrapped a uh, baby Luke up in one of those Jedi garbs when they dropped him off. And then he was like, oh, this is nice. I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> you can't wear it for 20 years. I'm just going to strap I'm this thing I'm just going to wear it until then. <laughs> Maybe. Well. See, just we can retcon. We just Jordan See, can, can retcon. I can fix anything. <laughs> <laughs> fix anything. Got questions? I got answers. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to, let's move on to the Star Wars games involved in the original trilogy. One. 